and um, it's it's really it's always great to be together to share God's word um, and to see what the Lord has to say to each and every one of us. So it's it's really a privilege to be alive and well on a Sunday morning and just to a fellowship to, with one another. Um, as I always say, um, there are many people who want to be here, who want to be in church, who want to be worshiping, but they can't. So we need to take this privilege very seriously. Uh, we just thank God for his mercies upon us. And um, in our worship song, there's a part that stood out for me. And it says that I will build my life upon your love. Uh, it is a firm foundation. And that's very encouraging for all of us that we can build our lives. We can trust in the perfect love of God for his children. Um, we can trust in God's perfect love for his children. It's a firm foundation. Um, and we can build our lives securely upon Jesus. We can trust him uh, absolutely in, in every single thing. And we can, again, trust in God's love uh, for his children. So it's just encouraging to, to hear those words again. And so it's important that we all let it sink in. Um, in, in, in different seasons in our lives, uh, even when it seems like God is silent, uh, we need to know that he's still there. All right. So it's, it's great to be here. Um, we're going to just pause um, our, our a series of your More Than Conquerors for, for this Sunday. And this Sunday, we're going to focus on a new message, which is, what do you value the most? Where is your treasure? The title of the message is, what is your what is your treasure or where is your treasure? And, um, and uh, the, the passage is taken from Matthew 6, verse 19 to 24. Um, and the reason is because we're supposed to do more than conquerors, but, you know, sometimes the Lord leads a different way and our job is just to obey. Um, so we'll continue more than conquerors after this series on uh, where is your treasure. And our passage is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 24. Um, so some of the questions we want to answer in this series is, what is our treasure? You know, where does our treasure lie? If we look at our hearts, look at our lives, what is our real treasure? What do we value the most? Number one. Number two, what is it that we should value the most? What must we actually value the most? What must be the core, the front and center of our lives? What must be the most important? important thing in our lives, what matters the most in our lives. And that is obviously Jesus, for followers of Christ, for believers in Christ, for children of God. It should be Jesus, nothing else. And the third question then is, how do we make Jesus our treasure? How do we make him our treasure? How do we make Christ our treasure? I want us to also understand, please, that this message applies to every single one of us, everybody, um, yourselves, myself, Whoever's listening, it applies to all of us, all of us, because we all struggle in this area. Life happens, we have distractions, we have things that we're trying to do, and they somehow in some way take over our mind, our energy, and our efforts. And we lose track of the fact that the most important thing that we should build our lives upon should be Christ. So this message applies to every single one of us. So it's not a message that's meant to bring guilt but it's one that's meant to um, make us to examine our hearts and to offer hope. Hope in the sense that if we look at our lives and he's not our treasure, um, we still have the opportunity to make him uh, our treasure. So as I preach this message and I share it with you, um, I also speak to myself as well. And my prayer is that the Lord will help every single one of us um, to love him as we should. That's my prayer. The Lord, the Lord will help every single one of us to love him as we ought to. Um, and, uh, you know, because the Bible says all of us are falling short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of his glory. So that's my prayer that the Lord will help us to love him as, as we should and to place him, to place him, to give him the preeminence and supremacy in our lives um, that he deserves. So we're going to be reading from Matthew 6, 19 to 24. We're going to read through the passage. And then we'll dive into the message. So Matthew 6, uh, 1924, it reads, says, Jesus speaking, he says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin 
that is rats or, or yeah or rats destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me read that again. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He then goes on to say in verse 22, he says, The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. He's not talking about physical eyes there. He's talking about our spiritual eyes. Okay? If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24. Our final verse, it says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one master and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So you can't have two things that you treasure the most in your life. What I mean by that is that you can't have two things that are the most critical, important thing in your life that define you. Okay? It, it either is God or something else. And where he put money, when we have money there, you can put you can put uh, ourselves, you can put worry, you can put the fear of man, you can put the praise of man, you can put careers, you can put our success. But what Christ is saying here is this: the overriding core center of our lives is either God or something else. That's what he's saying. He's saying here very clearly that we cannot serve both. We can't serve God and serve something else. And I can make make the point in the series that. Upon the heart of every man is a throne. And that throne, either on that throne is either seated Christ or something else. A throne can only take one king. We are only so we're subject to one king and one king only. And it's either Jesus or it's not Jesus. And if it's not Jesus, then we have a problem. So he's saying that not to store up treasures for ourselves on earth where moth and vermin destroy, but store up treasures for ourselves in heaven where uh, moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where our treasure is, there our heart will also be. So what Jesus is saying effectively in these verses is that, first of all, he's telling us, he's, he's, he's you know, explaining to us that the primary focus of, of our lives should not be focused on earthly things. The main focus of our lives should not be focused on earthly things, but eternal things. The Bible makes it clear that, yes, we are in this earth, but we are not off the earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. So as we live and move and operate in this world, the main focus of our lives should not be on earthly things, but on eternal things, the things of God, the things of Christ. He's telling us clearly in this passage that earthly things and temporary things will pass away. The unsure, the things of this world are temporary and the unsure. That's why he says that moth and vermin destroy, right? Moth and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. So the, the things of this life, the things of this life are temporary, and they pass away. They're unsure. Ultimately, they will pass away. And the reason why Jesus starts by telling us not to store up treasures for ourselves on earth is because he understands the human heart. He knows that because we are in this world, our natural tendency is to operate as if we are of this world. And our focus is to operate as if this world is all that there is. So he's warning us to say, listen, as you operate in this world, as you move in this world, make sure, make sure that the bulk of your energy and your effort, the core of your life is not in storing up treasures for yourself on earth because they will pass away, because they are temporary, because they are unsure. But he's saying to us that the treasures we store up for ourselves in heaven, when we live for the things of God, when we make him our front and center, he's saying those treasures, they are secure, they cannot be destroyed, and they are eternal. And that's why he says here in verse 20, he says, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. The treasures of heaven, the treasures that we store up for ourselves in heaven, by living for God, by living for Christ, 